Hello, good morning and welcome to Fuji in Japan in the shadow of Fujisan, the holy mountain. We are ready for the penultimate race of the FIA World Endurance Championship. The six hours of Fuji, round seven of eight of this year's season. We are about to go racing in Japan. We go green in Japan and an early move across the track from the outside the front row and the grid from the number eight Toyota has not worked. In fact, rather than keeping the door closed, they have opened the door. Number 15 BMW, Marco Wittmann again starting the race up into second. It is the Cadillac that leads. We rewind back 12 months. Porsche got in front of the pole sitting Toyota at the start and led for four hours. The Toyotas could not get by. And there is a Toyota Porsche battle. That's the seven car Mike Conway shoved up on the grass by the number six car of Lawrence Van Tor. The BMW now off the circuit and wheel banging side by side with the Porsche number five into the last corner. The Cadillac in front absolutely bolted. The dream start. You see this slipstreaming going on. Rolling board with the Peugeot. And the number 83 has a huge lockup and makes contact with car five. The moment you saw the tyre smoke, you knew it was going to be a hit. And somebody got hit in front as well. Uh, there's an Alpine. And is that the 51 Ferrari? Let's see the Ferrari. Is it an independent crack? Was he tagged? He might have just been tagged. But he was going for a move anyway on the Alpine. He yeah, hit. he was tagged. Yeah. yeah, the Alpine and the 51 Ferrari were innocent victims in that. And it is just, as you start drop downhill into that corner, look in the mirror. And the hands go on the head from the Alpine team. This is that 30 second stop and go penalty for this incident. Up the inside with the Porsche. And then there's a double contact further ahead as everybody locks up. The Alpine and the uh, factory car. This time around, much, much closer. The Alpine's on the outside. What's he going to do here? Try to switch back on the inside. But I think the Lamborghini might just have it covered. Good Great run, deal. though. Good run, though, from the Alpine on the exit. But he's only going to have to overtake the GT car as well before turn three. Yeah, Schumacher had to go the long way around the outside, and he's still on the outside of Mortara, off track. Now the corner comes to him, a long right-hander in turn four and five, double right-hander, but he can't keep the momentum, and that wider line helped Eduardo Mortara. The Alpine is right back with the Lamborghini, and this time the Lamborghini over the curb. Anthony loses traction, and the Alpine is on four wheels on the tarmac. And here comes the Porsche as well, the first the Hurst team, Jota cars. This is Phil Hansen, car number 38. It's not over yet, down into turn one, the Lamborghini is back. You can see on the slipstream, so this time it's the Alpine that has to defend. The Jota's getting involved as well, having a sniff around, but I think the Alpine's just got this one covered on the exit. Finally, Alpine's in front of the Lamborghini. So Lamborghini loses a spot in Hypercar, but gains one in LMGT3. Sarah Bovey in the Iron Dames car, up to second in LMGT3. Left sides only, it looks like, for Earl Bamber. There are two fresh tyres on the side there, and there is more afoot at BMW. It's going to be that run down towards turn one, as we so often see. Oh, Ross is getting involved. <laughs> Three wide, Valentino trying to take advantage of that. That's brilliant stuff. And he's read that situation pretty well. Pops up on the inside. He's got to be given space, though, for the other BMW on his left. But Valentino is trying hard to get by both of them. And at the moment, he's got by Augusto Farfus. So Rossi, look, in the double slipstream, Thinks about going on the inside, but then thinks better of it. Go back to the outside, cross over the line, appear on the inside. Beautifully done. And picks off the, uh, the sister car in the process before turn three. I'm not sure he thought that overtake here was going to actually happen. Farfus backs out of it quite early and allows Rossi the way through. This little battle, looking back from Mantai EMA, the Mantai Pure Racing car, and there comes the BMW. It's that man, Valentino Rossi, again. Look at that. I tell you what, this may be his best stint of the season. He's had some fun stints already this year. And this is Valentino Rossi behind Schmidt. He's going down the inside again. 
This is, you're right, an incredible stint so far for Rossi. And he sees the opportunity on the inside. He can't believe his luck. The seas part and he's through two cars in one corner. Earl Bamba wobbling over the curbs. Loose wheel or a puncture? Puncture, right front puncture. The clash on the exit of turn one. Hmm, forced off circuit, I don't know. Destroyed front right tyre. And back wheel. out. Well, is he down towards turn 10? It goes, and there's a bit of contact there before Lotterer goes to the outside. Nielsen's done a remarkable job here of a defensive driving. And uh, now Lotterer is going to look to cross the line, perhaps. No, commits to the outside again. Nielsen is placing his car beautifully well in all of the right places. What are you going to do this time, Andre? The defensive moves, I think that's what he's done. He's gone even further to the right-hand side and sends it down this time. Can Nielsen swap back on the line? I don't think he will do because his tyres don't quite have the life. There we go. I knew Lotterer was going to do something different. It's like a game of high-speed chess. I ah, did a good job, mate. Let's keep up as long as we can. Now it's all about tyre deg. About 23 laps to go. Yeah, 23 they... laps to go. <laughs> come on as De Vries goes for a look down the inside into that final corner and gets that overtake done. It was inevitable that this was going to happen. And yeah, Nielsen in a way saying, hey, come on, give me a bit of space on the outside. Uh, don't just drive me off the track. You're going to overtake me anyway. Uh, De Vries now has to defend on the inside and uh, going to have to really break late down towards turn one. Nielsen's not going to give up easily here. I think Nielsen might take this back. This might be De Vries's in lap as well, Nick Nielsen. Looks to cut back underneath him. And the more he can make De Vries defend, the slower De Vries' last couple of laps of this stint are going to be. Trouble for the Lamborghini. And that will be a turn it off and on again moment, I think, probably. Something broke, something broke on the gearbox. Gearbox, I'm in close. I'm stuck in between gears. Three and four! That's the... It's not the leader. Oh, Campbell. my goodness me. That's the five Porsche. Left rear puncture, number seven. Oh, so the, has he sent it up the inside and gone over the kerb and spun? We, we, saw, we saw the in car. You, you almost forced oh, me. That was very close indeed. This is Kobayashi on the inside. Campbell goes to the outside of turn one. Down through the gears. Are we going to go round the outside here? No, we switch back on the inside. And now we're heading towards the outside like they did before turn three, no. And we turn into turn three. Is he hit on the left rear? He's yeah. hit him on the left on the left rear, isn't he, Kobayashi? You could see Kobayashi in the mirror coming in underneath him. He tagged him in the back. Lead of the race for United Autosports McLaren. An hour and two and a half minutes to go. But this is where the pass happened for the lead in LMGT3. And Anthony, that was a good dive bomb. It was late, wasn't it? That's the leader. That is the leader. That is Kevin Escher having a big lockup and running off track. He had a six second margin over Dries Van Tour. I slipped on the brake pedal. Some liquid on the brake pedal. Copy that, copy. Might be the AC. Start to be very humid here. Davide Regon trying to win here in Japan for Ferrari. This would be if they can get in front, not only their first podium, but potentially their first win. And that is your one, two, three. Ferrari and McLaren both racing for a first win in LMGT3, racing for a first win this season. And for McLaren, a first ever win in World Endurance is what's up for grabs. This is not a done deal yet. 32 minutes to sort it out. Sosi's not giving up. It's 36, the Alpine versus the number two caddy, El Bamba, properly getting stuck in. And he's has to, he has to jink out to the outside because of the GT car on the inside. And that caused this situation. Wow, Earl Bamba in the barriers and with damage. Now, as he turns around, we're going to find out what I wanted to know, which is what's up with the left front. We can see the right front was OK. That's the end of their race. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's gone from bad to worse. And look, it was that little jink out from the Alpine and a reaction from Bamba. I don't think he... 
there was nothing he could really do there on the marbles. Tough end to what was a really promising race for Cadillac. Contact when battling for a podium. Here comes Maxime Martin. This car has had good results and rubbish luck at the same time, the 46 car. That's back out for the final stop. You saw the BMW team cheering that back up into third place. It's a strong run from the 46 car and the, the, the middle stints by Valentino Rossi were some of the highlights of its race so far. Car 8, drive through penalty for ignoring blue flags and fighting with car 6 at T15 and T16. Car 6 is coming by, oh, so he has overtaken him and he defended the position and, and actually made contact through turn 15. So he had a blue flag and, and fought the position. This is going to be on in 13, it's going to be close. There's a bit of contact between the two of them. Nato hangs around the outside of 13, gives himself the inside for 14 and 15. Great stuff, well thought out as well by Schumacher. Does he think about going to the inside here? He does, he's popped it down the inside and gets the move done finally in the last corner. Does Nato stay in the slipstream? He will do, so it's not over yet. Don't celebrate too early, team. They know it. That's 93 and 18, so that is uh, the 12 rather, so the 93 Peugeot has got up into fourth place. Yeah, Jensen absolutely flying. He's going to have to watch out a little bit here, not to be able to think about coming back on the inside, but yeah, Jensen has the pace. Second place, the BMW car number 15. What a race this crew has had. Dries Van Tour with one more lap before they post BMWs best result of the season. They're all getting ready to join their teammates, so too Alpine and the number six Porsche crew. Nobody counting their chickens before the chequered flag, but Kevin Esch bringing the car towards the line. They led for four hours here a year ago. Toyota beat them in the end, but Porsche remains the only team to beat Toyota here in Fuji. And they do it for a second time in a different category. Hypercar victory in Japan for the number six Porsche team with BMW in second and Alpine in third, their first podium. Check it, flag. flag! We are back, we are back! What a race! Yeah, guys. Great job, great job. Amazing job. Thank you. Mission accomplished for car number 12, Hertz Team Jota. They are the FIA World Cup team's champions. Congratulations from the Toyota rivals and celebrations for the number six Porsche crew. I was a bit stressed because obviously I know my brother well. I texted my dad, so I hope he stays calm. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, I think it's very great for us. I mean, uh, for us to win and then to have my brother next to the podium is a pretty, pretty special weekend, which we'll uh, remember for a long time. A first LMGT3 win in Fuji. For last year's GTE AM winners, Thomas Floor, Francesco Castellacci and Davide Rigon. A remarkable history this crew have got. It is their third win in Fuji. All three of Thomas Floor's victories have come at the Japanese circuit. Behind the Ferrari crew, second place was enough for Alex Malikin, Joel Sturm and Klaus Bachler to claim the FIA Endurance Trophy for GT3 drivers. They celebrate on the podium in second with the AF Corsa crew the winners and the 46 BMW crew's second podium as they take third. Kevin Est, Lawrence Van Tour and Andre Lotterer move one step closer to the title. But for BMW and Alpine, two really resounding results as they step onto the podium as well. And Porsche has retaken the manufacturer's championship lead from Toyota. In the team's championship, an all Porsche podium. Hertz Team Jota 1-2 ahead of Proton competition. And the number 12 crew tie up the title. And that is it from Fuji. More to be decided in Bahrain, but the number six crew claiming victory here take a big step towards the title. And Porsche could be manufacturer's champions as well. And what about Ferrari, BMW, and the rest of them in LMGT3? Lots to still be sorted out. It'll be a home race that Toyota will wish to forget, but in Bahrain, they still have the chance of winning the Manufacturers' Championship, and that will be their target.